Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to compare the Asus Zen Wi-Fi AX X-T8 to the Asus Zen Wi-Fi AX Mini X-T4. I'm going to compare their speed tests in different configurations, their range test. I'm going to go over some of the features or options that they have. And I'm going to try to answer the question, which one is worth getting and why? So starting off with the X-T8, you get a two-pack in the U.S for $449. They're identical, they're basically both routers, and it actually comes with a lot of ports, so which is not standard in mesh Wi-Fi's typically. It's standard in most routers, but not in mesh Wi-Fi's. Uh, so you get a WAN port which supports up to 2.5 gig internet. You get three additional ports to hook up your devices. If you need more ports, hook it up to an unmanaged switch. You get a USB port that you can make your external hard drive into a network hard drive. I will have a video link for this that I've show you guys how to do this. I'll be in the description below if you guys are, you know, want to check that out. And while you're down there, hit that subscribe button. All right, moving on. Okay, so and then you get a little power port in case you don't want to unplug and plug back in if your router ever messes up and you need to restart. So. For the XT4, you actually get one router, dedicated router, whereas with the XT8, you could pick any one you want to set up as your main one, and then the other one acts as a node. But with the XT4, you get a three pack in the US, and that retails for $279. But in that three pack, you get one router and you get two nodes. Now I'm going to put one of the nodes down. So in the router, you get a WAN port and you get a LAN port. So the WAN is obviously for your wide area network, which is pretty much your internet. And your LAN port is if you want to either hook it up to this to give you a wired backhaul connection, or you can hook it up to a switch and then hook it up to that to give you a wired backhaul, uh, wired backhaul connection. Or you can just not use it, or you can hook it up directly to your computer or you can hook it up to a switch and then just expand the ports that way. Whatever you want to do, you have two ports. With this one, you only have one port. So if you're wondering, okay, can I wire from this guy to this guy and then from this guy to that, the other guy? Well, no, it doesn't look like you can do that because there's not enough ports. So if this one is wired to this guy, you're at a port. So the way you would wire them to each other if you were going to wire them, which is something I always recommend, is you basically have to go through a switch. So if you go through a switch, then yeah, then you can wire them. So you can hook this up to a switch, and then from that switch, go to this one, and then to the other one. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, okay, so this doesn't have any USB ports or anything like that, which is pretty much standard for mesh Wi-Fi, so you don't get additional features or anything like that, but that's pretty much the ports, and obviously this is your dedicated one that you hook up to your modem. Now, as a three pack of the XT4, I should grab these. It's slightly uncomfortable carrying three of them, but anyways. So as a three pack, you get 4,800 square feet of coverage or 446 square meters. As a two pack of the XT8, you actually get 5,500 square feet of coverage or 510 square meters. So as a two pack, you're gonna get more coverage than as a three pack of this. That's what ASUS advertises. Now, are you gonna get that? Well, it depends. You might get that, you might get more than that, you might get less than that. Now, range really varies based on your location. If you have a lot of walls, if they're concrete walls, if they're brick walls, if it's in the basement. If you live in a building where there's other people with routers and stuff that create wireless interference, all of that stuff hurts your range. If you're in a wide open area, you could get way more than that. But all of that stuff, that's why they come up with these up to numbers. So if you get to the up to number, that's already fantastic. Okay, so, you know, is this worth, you know, it's it's not quite double the price, but you're, you're getting close to double the price. So what are you getting for that? So this is a dual band system and this is a tri-band system. Well, what's the difference between dual band and tri-band? Well, the short answer is tri-band works better if they're wirelessly connected to each other. So if you had both of these, if you hooked up this one to your modem and then you went you know, one or two rooms away, hooked this up to the power, they wirelessly talk to each other, which is called wireless backhaul. 
that would give you a faster connection for this guy, for the secondary one. You're always going to get the best possible connections with the one hooked up to your modem because you're using an Ethernet cable hooked up to the modem. But with this one, because it's wirelessly connected, you're going to notice some loss. Now, if you have a tri-band, typically the loss is going to be minimal or non-existent, depending on your internet speeds. The faster your internet, the more of a loss you will see. But typically, tri-band has a dedicated band for that to improve the speeds. Now, the longer answer, not that that wasn't long enough, is they're essentially... Dual band has two frequencies, so 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Those are the wireless frequencies that Wi-Fi devices use to connect to Wi-Fi uh, mesh systems or routers in general. Now, a dual band has those two, a 2.4 and a 5 gig. A tri-band has three of them. It has the same 2.4 and 5 gig, and it has an additional 5 gig. The reason why wireless backhaul works better for tri-bands is because the additional 5 gig is used solely for that communication so it's not being shared that's why it's actually faster now when you connect Wi-Fi devices to your routers they are actually sharing speeds the wireless speeds obviously they're also sharing the internet speeds but they're sharing the wireless speeds as well so if you hook them up via to each other via Ethernet you're not going to notice much of a slowdown between those but the other advantage of a tri-band, if you're hooked, if these, so if these are hooked up via Ethernet to create a wired backhaul, which is going to give you the best possible connection, what's the advantage of that additional band? Well, that additional band gives you additional coverage for your Wi-Fi devices because now they can connect to that uh, additional band. And so there will be less of a slowdown because there's actually more room for more devices without it slowing down as much. That's the other advantage of tri-band. If you guys have questions, you just please leave in the comment sections below. I do try to answer them. Uh, and while you're down there, hit that subscribe button. Don't worry, I'll wait. All right, let's continue. Okay, so I showed you guys the ports and stuff. The next thing is this has a speed rating of AX6600. This has a speed rating of AX1800. Speed ratings are the additions of the band, so tri-bands typically have much more because it's the 2.4 gig speed with the 5 gig plus another 5 gig, so the numbers are usually larger than the dual bands. Okay, and okay, so that's pretty much that. Now we're going to get into the speed test. So for the speed test, I used both of my phones, which is the iPhone 12 Pro, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device and my Pixel 5, which is my Wi-Fi 5 device. Now, both of these mesh systems support the latest Wi-Fi 6, so if you have the latest Wi-Fi 6, that typically works better, but they're both backwards compatible with previous wireless devices. So far, at the time of this recording, most devices are still on Wi-Fi 5. There are a few that are, are on Wi-Fi 6, and obviously, as time goes on, there's going to be more devices on Wi-Fi 6. So it's more like future-proofing by getting a Wi-Fi 6 mesh system, but it's backwards compatible. Now, my speed test when I do them on with my computer and stuff, well, my internet service provider underrates it a little bit, but typically when I get my speeds are 480 megabits per second down and around 24 megabits per second up. Those are my best, around my best possible speed. So that's what I'm going to go off of. So just because this thing can support up to 2.5 gigabits per second of internet doesn't actually mean I'm going to get that. So they're actually limited by how fast my internet is. So super important to keep a note of. To keep it consistent with how I did all my other mesh Wi-Fi's, I go into options and I say, oh, this option is this and this option is that. But because these are both different options, because this is a two router combo and then this is a router versus a node combo, I'm just going to omit the options. I might write the option numbers on the screen, but I'm just going to tell you guys what they mean uh, just to make it simple. So you don't actually have to use these as mesh systems. You can actually just use the router by itself. And with that, when you hook them up, pretty much get full speeds. The same is true for this one. You don't actually have to use the two other nodes. 
you can just hook this up by itself, pretty much get full speeds, which is what I would expect from either one of these. Now, when you go to wired backhaul, when you hook them up to each other via ethernet, so obviously, if these are hooked up to each other via ethernet, there can be a switch or two switches in between, that's no problem. As long as there's an ethernet cable going from this guy to this guy, there's a physical connection, that's called wired backhaul. When you do that, you get full speeds with this, when you do speed tests. And for those speed tests, I'm actually only doing a speed test on the secondary device because the primary one, because you're hooked up via ethernet to your modem, you're always gonna get full speeds when you're closer to this guy. But when you're closer to this guy, that's usually the one that suffers. So that's the one that I do the speed test on. So again, when these are hooked up via Ethernet, they're pretty much giving you the same speeds because there's an Ethernet connection there. The same is true for the XD4. When these are hooked up to each other via Ethernet and that one as well, no matter which node you go next to, you get full speeds. Now, to hook these up via Ethernet, you do have to use a switch because they're limited to one port, so if you go in, you can't go out like most of the other mesh systems that I do. So, you do have to use a switch, but as long as there's a physical connection between them, you get full speeds no matter which node you're using, which is good. Now comes the wireless backhaul. Wireless backhaul, because this is a tri-band, again, I explained that earlier, you get pretty much full speeds with this. And if you're wondering, okay, can I use the Ethernet ports on the secondary one if these are wirelessly connected? And the answer is yes. And I did a speed test that way and I pretty much almost got full speeds there as well. From the secondary one, I hooked up my Xbox Series X. So very good and which is what I would expect for my internet speeds for a tri-band. If you have gigabit internet speeds, you you I don't know if you're actually gonna get the full speeds, but you'll get more than if you're gonna hook up a dual band. So, and obviously if your internet speeds are slower than mine, if you're on tri-band, you'll also get full speeds because it can handle up to a certain amount. Okay, with wireless backhaul with these, no matter which node you uh, go to, so the primary one that's hooked up to your modem, which is your router, that one you get full speeds. The nodes, the speeds are cut by a little more than half. So when I did speed tests with both devices, they were pretty much identical. I was getting around 199 down and 22 up with both devices. And with this one as well, if these are wirelessly connected, you can actually hook this up to a device. I hooked it up to my laptop via ethernet and and I did a speed test on that and I pretty much got the same speeds. I got 199 down and 24 up. So yeah. So either way, you're fine. Uh, you can hook it up to your Xbox. That's also fine. In fact, I did that as well and I got very similar speeds. Okay, so those are the speed tests. So the biggest difference is obviously wirelessly because this is a dual band system, it the, the nodes start to suffer uh, the nodes start to suffer on wireless backhaul. So that's the bigger difference. Okay, range test time. Again, range really varies based on how many walls there are, concrete walls, brick walls, other interference, all that stuff. But let's get into the range test. So I use the same exact two devices, obviously, for the range test as well. And let me grab one of each. So for the X-T8, at 20 feet, 6.1 meters away, pretty much got full speeds. The same is true for the X-T4, pretty much full speeds. And then I went 50 feet away, and I got really good speeds, and so far up to, the, up to now, this is the fastest, uh, this is the best range mesh Wi-Fi that I've tested, which is the X-T8. Okay, so at 50 feet, I got 255 down and 23 up with the Wi-Fi 6, the iPhone 12 Pro and I got 165 down, 23 up, and this is all in megabits per second, uh, not to be confused by megabytes per second. That's actually outside my front door with the front door closed, which actually makes a difference. If I leave it open, I can actually get a little bit faster or go a little bit further. With this one, surprisingly, I actually got slightly faster than that. Uh, but granted, that could have been the server, but very good speeds. 269 down and 23 up and 232 down and 22 up so it was actually 
And you could start seeing the differences between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 5 at this point. So the farther away you go, Wi-Fi 6 starts to outshine uh, Wi-Fi 5. But I actually got better speeds at 50 feet away with this one than I did with this one. At 60 feet, it pretty much corrected itself. So with the XT8, I got 230 down, 23 up, and then 136 down, 21 up with the Wi-Fi 5. With this one, still very similar speeds. Uh, slightly slower now at 60 feet away. And then at 70 feet, this thing is still destroying basically at 190 down, 23 up. You can see that the Wi-Fi 5 is starting to suffer. But at 70 feet, I actually got decent speeds with the XT4 at 89 down and 23 up with the Wi-Fi 6 and 16 down, 5 up with the Wi-Fi 5. Now, this one utterly destroys and goes all the way up to 105 feet. Even at 90 feet, it's still really good. This one at 90 feet is pretty much on the brink of losing connection, so the Wi-Fi 5 is no longer working. The Wi-Fi 5, you know, went a little past 70 feet, but it pretty much stopped working. And then the Wi-Fi 6 was already getting choppy, uh, so I managed to get a speed test in at 7 down and 1 up, but I mean, it's it's at the edge so it can't really do much better than that where this one obviously goes more which is again what I would expect because uh, this one actually has very impressive range so the fact is this one also has very impressive range for it being a dual band for its price actually uh, very good range for this one so I was actually surprised by the range of that okay so now in terms of features uh, they're both exactly the same um, in terms of features, essentially. I mean, you get an additional band with this, so you get to customize that a little bit. And you also get a USB port with this, which you can make a network drive. So you get additional options for that. You get, you know, the whole AI protection suite, which is free, which, you know, does... It adds extra security features, which is nice that it's included because some other brands requires a subscription for that. Not that it's not secure without that, but it's just like additional security features and this includes it. And ASUS has literally a ton of options. I wanted to say a billion options, which would be false, but uh, they have a ton of options, like a, a ton of options, more options than what most people would need. Final thoughts, which one is worth getting and why? Well, the simple answer is, if you're gonna do wireless backhaul, so obviously hook up one to your modem, then just hook up the other one to your power in another room or two rooms away, then I personally would opt for the tri-band. I think it's worth the extra price. You also get the ability to make your portable hard drives into a network drive, which is nice. You get additional ports, which is nice. So, I think it's worth it, but mainly because of the speed difference. Whereas with this one, if you're going to do it via Ethernet, then I would probably go with the dual band because you're not going to notice, even with the extra band supporting more Wi-Fi devices, unless you have a ton of Wi-Fi devices, uh, meaning like you have at least, I don't know, 70, 80 or more Wi-Fi devices, then yeah, you probably should get the tri-band. But yeah, if you're going to do wired setup, Ethernet setup, then I would, you know, I would save the money and get this unless you really wanted to use the USB port on this to make a external hard drive to a network drive, you know, um, or if you wanted slightly more range, then get that. But, but that's pretty much what it comes down, in my opinion. It really just depends. If you're doing wireless, I always recommend tri-band. If you're doing wired, I recommend saving money and going dual band so let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below as always thank you guys for watching hit that subscribe button i have other mesh wi-fi videos coming up as well as other tech videos and i'll see you guys in the next one